Hi, I'm Nicola Cairncross. Hi, hello. Hey. Hi. I'm going to talk to you about success. Hi there, it's Nicola here and I just thought I'd start this video today with a glimpse of the glorious view from my balcony. Spring has definitely arrived in Stupa and we're all making the most of it. I've even got a short sleeve t-shirt on today. So, welcome to the V-Zine. Um, it's been a quite an interesting week. I've had a, a real body blow to my business this week and I'm going to talk about that in the middle section. So uh, yeah, just wanted to just let you know what a glorious day it is here. I hope the weather's improving in England and I'm looking to keep these um, beginning and end bits a bit short now so uh, because I wanted to keep these videos under 10 minutes so they can get onto LinkedIn as well. Yeah, my whole family got together without me this week. It was uh, quite a tug on the old heartstrings, I can tell you. They FaceTimed me from my nephew Spud's 21st birthday celebrations. They were all having a great time together in Brighton. And uh, it's times like that you have to just really remember why you're doing what you're doing, why you're living where you're living, and the fact that you can go and see your loved ones at any time. It's not um, It's not that, you know, you know, by living in a different country that you're uh, exiled and you can't go back. In fact, I'm going back within um, the next four weeks, so I'm really looking forward to that. Let's get on with the show, shall we? Okay, so I said I was going to tell you about the body blow that my business has had this week. Um, I'm right smack bang in the middle of my 30 day challenge, how to be everywhere online, and it's going really well. I've got about 70 to 80 people going through that at the moment. And um, one day this week, I recorded the seg segment when I was showing people how to set up their own Facebook ad campaigns to boost their video content that they've just created. And, and uh, I've got to say, they're making some great video content too. I'm really proud of them. Anyway, next day, open up my own ad account and find it's been disabled. Facebook have suddenly taken an objection to me after a whole year of perfect advertising. And not only have they said this ad is disapproved, they've closed my account. Well, I'm not taking that for an answer because apparently you can get your accounts undisabled if you don't argue with them, that's the main thing, and then you go and find, find, try and find out what's wrong. Now, there were two or three things that could be wrong. I had an exit pop, which was um, a messenger exit pop, so I thought it would be okay. And I thought exit pops were okay, but I'm still not sure if they are or not. Um, I've had, um, I'm living in a different country most of the time, so my payment method is housed in a different country than the one I currently reside in, and that can be a problem. Um, the main problems turned out to be, though, they don't like my business model anymore. Now, we all know what this is about. It's basically Facebook are trying to um, free up some more space for advertisers, so they're making swinging cuts on people whose business model or adverts might be a little bit borderline for them. Now, I keep very, very up to date with their Facebook terms and conditions of advertising. You can imagine that. And um, I, but I, what I hadn't done was looked at my website recently. And one of the two things they don't like was very evident on my website. One was that I was making time bound claims because I was saying be everywhere online in under 20 minutes a week. Now, why, while that is actually factually true, because if you outsource most of it, you can just take 20 minutes to make a video like this. Um, Facebook don't like claims that are time bound, so I've had to get rid of that for a start. The other thing they don't like is um, anything talking about fi specific financial outcomes. So when I say I've right, um, started uh, four different businesses and achieved six figure incomes for those four different businesses in the last 10 years, they don't like that at all. So I've had to take that off. And when I talk about my, in the testimonials section, where my clients have actually said um, what they've earned, they don't like that either. 
so I've had to take that off. <laughs> and I've also put a whacking great disclaimer on the footer menu, the header menu, and whenever I talk about clients' results, because you can't take everything off your um, testimonials. Nobody would ever sign up because they would never believe that people achieve any results at all. So I think you'll cover it if you put big disclaimer notices everywhere, ugly as they are. Okay, I'm always keen to comply with, I'm a, I'm a law-abiding person. I'm not someone who's ever tried to bunk off paying fares and things like that. So I will be working with them to comply 100% with every requirement because it is still the best way to advertise and get to your future, potential future customers. Um, I'm just changing the site. Apparently the other thing they like is they, love, they want to know what you're selling. So when um, people arrive at your site, it should be very obvious that you've got something to sell. And so I'm making my books front and centre again because if people buy my books then they're likely to become clients and that is a low cost purchase that a potential future client can make quite easily to see if they want to work with me or not. So working with them to become compliant um, it felt like I've been sucker punched in the stomach that morning when I got that email but you know you have to just get control of your mind as I'm always talking about on this vzine and carry on and work things out. So hopefully that's helped you and uh, you can go and have a look at your website now to see if Facebook would like you and if not make some changes. Speak to you later. Okay, so what's on the blog or the podcast this week? Well, on the Own It podcast, there is a fantastic interview with Tom Evans. He's an amazing person. He's um, a very spiritual businessman, and he t tells us how to bend time, which, you know, you can actually hear the gasps of, of amazement as uh, we listen to him. It is a fantastic interview. That's Own It number 174. And uh, we're trying to encourage everyone who loves the Own It podcast to go and listen to us and subscribe on Radio Public because rather marvellously Radio Public are now starting to pay people per listen and as our podcast is largely for marketing purposes only but our existing and you know new clients absolutely love it we're just saying you know give us a bit of support by going and listening on Radio Public today and uh, that's get let's get us up the charts we've already been featured on their independent podcast to watch so that's really nice and a few listens over there would not only I mean something like two cents um, a listen but it does all mount up eventually what else we got oh right so what i'm doing is i'm recycling on my own blog and my own podcast every month <clears throat> an interview with someone who's doing business a little bit differently and this month it's like my very own singing sister Heather Cancross. Now Heather is a really practical person as well as being incredibly artistic with a fantastic voice obviously but she decided she wanted to make a jazz out and she blogged the whole process on her website. I was helping her with the marketing obviously. I interview her in this podcast all about how um, she became entrepreneurial enough to uh, release her own album and to see it through the whole process from choosing the music through to getting the cover made and then distributing the records. So if you're interested in the music industry at all and uh, you'd like to share that with someone, do pass it on because it will be incredibly helpful and then they can visit her blog and actually read the story of how she went about making her own album. And then finally last week in VZ number 62, I was talking about you bringing the magic. I was talking about um, the fact that Michael O'Neill in his book Creating the Impossible says that any project's only ever got a 50-50 chance of success. and um, the, the 1% that tips it over into success or otherwise is you, you're the magic. And it was a really interesting thought process I followed in that evazine because it made me realize that all the things that have succeeded in my past are largely because I stepped up and I became the 1% that perhaps somebody else might have done a different job and they might have succeeded in a different way. Somebody else might have not succeeded and in other projects I might not succeed because I bring my 1% to that project and it's not what's required so I go round around the houses a little bit on that one thinking about that whole concept and if you enjoy that kind of thought process then I think you'd enjoy it too so that's VZ number 62 and you can find that at nicolacancross.com forward slash blog or nicolacancross.com forward slash VZ have a fantastic week won't you and I will speak to you again next week